it's live. Hey, good morning, Facebook friends. Glad to have you joining in with us this morning. And um, I know a number of you are going to be jumping online here shortly. So we're just going to give you a couple mornings or a couple moments to jump online as we get ready to gather on this Palm Sunday, April 5th, 2020. Um, it's just incredible to be worshiping this way and to commemorate the life of Jesus Christ in this fashion. Um, I really miss you this morning. In fact, somebody this morning um, snuck into the church either early this morning or late last night and put, I don't know, 20 dolls throughout the sanctuary. Uh, maybe at the end of the service, I'll take a, a picture of all the, uh, the congregation, so to speak, that's hanging out with me. I see Minnie Mouse. Uh, I see a Cabbage Patch Kid. What's uh, some frozen princess? Um, looks like Yoshi back there in the back. I don't, I don't know. So we've got all sorts of friends joining us this morning, and uh, we'll just kind of hope that they keep their mouths shut and don't interrupt the service too much, unless they give a hearty amen at some point. So uh, I'm going to invite some special guests to join me on stage, and they're going to help. These are real live guests, not these uh, dolls that are in the, the, the place. So I'm going to invite my kids to join me on stage and give a couple announcements as we get rolling this morning. Hi, guys. Hello, William. Hey. hey. Uh, so, William, take it away. Um, so yesterday there was a grocery giveaway, and we just want to say thank you. There were 195 families that showed up and received food. That's about 700 people. We'd like to tell you our next grocery giveaway is April 18th. Thanks, William. Nicely done. Um, we've been getting together on Wednesday nights for crew, and we can you can join us this week, Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. The Instagram is at crew underscore MBWC. Nice. Thanks, Kate. Hey, Eliza. Kid. Hey, kids. There's Wombaland and Upstreet stuff online for us to do. Go to this website. nbwesleyan.org slash at dash home, and you guys can find out some uh, kids' information. Every week it's updated with Wombaland and Upstreet information, and um, you guys can find that stuff out on our website. You can just go to mbwesleyan.org, and you can, it'll, it'll click you over. There's a button there to, to jump over to the at home page. So you guys want to say good morning to anybody or hello to anybody or any parting words before you get to roll on out of here? Nope. No? Eliza, you want to say hi to anybody? Nana, Granddad, no. Papa, Dotsie. No. They're going to be sad. Kate, are you saying <laughs> hi to anybody? No. Okay. Uh, say thanks to my kids, wherever you are, and uh, appreciate you guys. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Well, we all make our kids do things that they don't always love to do. Uh, I appreciate my kids helping out this morning and uh, chipping in. They're in the background whispering to their mother now, getting directions for uh, what's next. I hope things are going well in your home this morning. I hope you're having a, a great morning and just really glad that you've decided to, to set time aside this morning to join us in worship. Uh, I, hope that, I hope God blesses you. I hope that your living room actually becomes a bit of a sanctuary. And uh, we love when you've been sharing or emailing some of the pictures or posting online some of the pictures of what it looks like as you worship in your home and as you gather. Just love seeing your family units together. Um, love seeing you gather um, maybe at work. Some of you have been at work and watching and listening and uh, just definitely appreciate all that you're doing. My kids said it well. Uh, I appreciate Pastor Jason leading our, our next gen students and getting our crew, families together, and students together on Wednesday nights. So thanks, Pastor Jason, for what you're doing there. And he's been in coordination and communication, really, with some of our uh, kids' workers as well uh, to start um, connecting a little bit further with, with some of you as families. So I appreciate him very much and the crew, volunteers, and thank you for um, just loving on those kids in a, in a great way. William said it right. Uh, we had a great day yesterday. The grocery giveaway was fantastic. What he didn't mention was that we had over 50 volunteers working. Uh, it was just a, a great, um, great 
response from you to, to serve together, and I just really appreciate you very much. Eliza said it well, too. That there's some information online, and so check out our website. Two more just quick things. Thank you for your generosity and your continued support financially of our church. Thanks for going online and giving at nbwesleyan.org. There's a giving tab there. Uh, you can text to give. There's information on the website also about how you can text to give. You can give through your bank. Um, picking up the mail yesterday, there were a number of checks yesterday uh, that were passed along to our treasurer that you've used your bank to send your giving. So thank you so much. And even this morning after I arrived here, uh, someone came and slid uh, a giving envelope to me and away they drove. Um, so thank you for the creative ways you are giving and sacrificing during this time of crisis and this time where we can't really be together in person. I just deeply, deeply appreciate you. I have a, uh, an assignment for some of you this morning. Uh, we're looking for a few volunteers. Um, we don't want to get in trouble or anything, but uh, we can probably house a couple volunteers at a time working around the property. Uh, what we really have uh, are some issues with some of our old trees over to the east, um, some old orchards where there's a number of dead trees and branches that are down. So I'm looking for people with chainsaws, uh, people who want to come out and make some noise a little bit and uh, do some, uh, some tree cleanup. Here's the assignment. Um, I need to know your phone number if you're interested in helping out because I'll put you in touch with the person coordinating this. Uh, you can call the church. Uh, in fact, you can do it right now, 688-2380. Just leave me your name and your phone number, and I'll um, pass it along to Danny Zarowski, who is looking for some help um, cleaning up some stuff in the trees. So 688-2380, or if you know Danny's phone number, just blow up his phone right now, text him and say, yeah, I can help, and I can uh, come make some noise with you and uh, do, do a little bit of cleanup in the yard. So do that for me, uh, 688-2380. So I'm going to switch gears. Um, uh, in a, and at the end of the service today, we're going to give you some, some cool news about where we're heading this Holy Week. So hang with me through the whole message um, and through the closing prayer. And uh, Sarah's going to join me at the end of the service. And we'll talk about where we're going uh, this Easter week. So just hang with me for a handful of minutes as I walk through a message with you. And then we'll get to some information about um, Easter week and what, what this week holds for us as the body of Christ. So do me the favor of finding a Bible or turning on a Bible, doing whatever you need to do to get a Bible, grab it off the coffee table, find it in the table next to your easy chair, wherever you're sitting, um, and grab a Bible. And I'm, I want you to turn to John chapter 12. We'll be there in just a couple minutes. And so why don't you grab that Bible and listen as I read Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5, just as some opening text this morning, and then I want to join in, in a word of prayer with you. So here's, here's Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. We can rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us. They help us develop endurance, and, and endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And those, this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us, because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. So would you pray with me? God, thanks for this morning. Thank you for allowing us to gather as the people of God and allowing us to gather today, even though we're separated by space. Thank you that we can gather in your spirit and we can gather as your people, regardless of where we are or uh, what setting we're in today. We're just quieting our hearts for these next few moments to hear from you and allow your word to teach us. And in doing so, we're continuing to pray for our nation. We're praying for uh, really the whole world, this creation that you love, God. We ask that you would be merciful to us and that you would bring good and not harm. We pray for those who are working today, especially those who might be first responders and police officers and doctors and nurses. We pray for um, families who are um, dealing with fear and sickness in their home. And we ask, God, that you would bring uh, your spirit of peace among us. So thank you that you're going to teach us, that you're with us, and I thank you for each person who's gathered this morning. It's great to be together as your people. I pray these things in Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. 
So this morning I want to talk to you about hope. And, and let me get you thinking about hope by asking you about, asking you about your week this past week. How has your week been? How has it gone? That's the question. How is, how is your hope as you come to the close of this week and as we head into the start of a, a new week? How is your hope? I think we'd be lying if we didn't acknowledge or s- somehow say that the struggles and fears present uh, in our weeks kind of are playing a number on us. This week, Michigan schools officially closed for the remainder of the year. And so for some of our families, this impacts you as you have seniors in high school, and you wonder what that means for them. Uh, f- for those of us with other younger children in the school age, uh, there's final activities, and there's honors nights, and there's friendships that are impact, and activities that are impact, and they're just gone. Uh, we know that employment is still down uh, nationally and in our own state. March Madness, the college basketball pinnacle, has not happened these past weeks, and that's troubling to some of you, right? And to make matters perhaps worse, as a number of you noted on Facebook this week, the mosquitoes are back. This has been quite a week, right? So how are you, how are you doing this week? You've got your Bible open, and I want you to make sure you're in John chapter 12. I'm going to read uh, a number of verses for you. Um, today, in the, in the course of the church year, is Palm Sunday. And each of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they include the story of what what we call Palm Sunday or the triumphal entry where Jesus returns to Jerusalem and as we know, it will be his final week on earth. It's a story of celebration, the story today. Uh, it's a story filled with images of hope. It's a story filled with images of triumph. And so I'm going to read uh, John chapter 12. Uh, my notes, I've got a typo. I think it's verse 12 that I'm starting in. Um, I don't have the notes on my page. I think it's verse 12 through 19. So John chapter 12, verse 12 through 19. The next day, the news that Jesus was on the way to Jerusalem swept through the city. A large crowd of Passover visitors took palm branches and went down the road to meet him. They shouted, Hosanna, praise God. Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hail to the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and rode on it, fulfilling the prophecy that said, Don't be afraid, people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming riding on a donkey's colt. His disciples didn't understand at the time that this was a fulfillment of prophecy. But after Jesus entered into his glory, they remembered what had happened and realized that these things had been written about him. Many in the crowd had seen Jesus call Lazarus from the tomb, raising him from the dead, and they were telling others about it. That was the reason so many went out to meet him, because they had heard about this miraculous sign. Then the Pharisees said to each other, There's nothing we can do. Look, everyone has gone after him. So picture with me for just a minute. Picture with me being part of a nation um, that is in a state of lockdown. Can you picture being part of a nation that is in a a, a state of lockdown? I think you can. So let me me take our situation and pull it back into Jesus' situation. The people of Israel during Jesus' day although not confined to their homes like many of us are feeling or being told by our government authorities, the people of Israel were held captive by the uh, empire of Rome. They, were, they, were, they had kind of some autonomy, but Rome really was in control. So imagine being a part of a state or part of a nation that is in a state of perpetual lockdown where someone else is telling you what you can and cannot do. Picture with me also being part of a nation where getting to your place of worship is difficult. Can you imagine that? I'm pretty sure you can. The people of Israel were experiencing, A, a decline in their their national uh, religious um, faith. Uh, Temple worship was down. Their their fervency for God was down during the, the days of Jesus. And at the same time, they would still gather in large uh, festivals, kind of annually or semi-annually in some festivals where, where they would join together as the people of God and still do some religious things. And in Jesus' day, this, this triumphal entry in John chapter 12, the, the city of Jerusalem is packed because people are there for Passover, which commemorates Moses leading the children of Israel out of Egypt. Picture with me being part of a nation where there are power struggles between different factions of government. Can you imagine a nation like that? 
I'm pretty sure you can. The, the people of Israel in Jesus' day were hoping and waiting for someone who would rise up and free them from Rome, giving them a renewed national identity and bring them peace and prosperity to their nation. They'd been, they'd been waiting for a king, kind of like King David in the Old Testament. If you're doing the year of biblical literacy with us, we've been reading about King David. They were hoping for a king who would kill giants and who would establish places of worship and, and restore uh, things that were grand and glorious in the nation of Israel. That's what they were hoping for. And in fact, uh, about a century and a half prior to Jesus, there was somebody who almost fit that description. His name was Judas Maccabeus. Judas uh, defeated an oppressive army, the Syrians. Uh, Judas restored righteous worship in the temple. He did this remarkable religious thing. And to celebrate Judas Maccabeus and his victory and his overthrowing of this uh, oppressive nation, you know what the people waved in their hands when Judas uh, Maccabeus won the war? Palm branches. 150 years prior to Jesus rolling into town in Jerusalem, the, the people of Israel had waved palm branches and celebrated a man who was going to be their king. And for a period of time, he and his family did rule Israel. And they thought they almost had their Messiah. And so from that point on, the, the palm branch became a symbol of peace. And it came, became a symbol of hope for the people of Israel. They even, on their coins, they would, they would emboss or imprint uh, the, um, uh, the image of a, a palm branch on their coins because they wanted to be reminded of this, this peace and this hope that they had in this one who would maybe come and be their king and maybe be their Messiah. They hoped things would change. So here comes Jesus. And they believed Jesus might be the one to take over their political struggles and their religious apathy. Maybe, just maybe, Jesus would become their king. You have your Bibles open. John chapter 12 records that the people sing. And the song they sing is from Psalm 118. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Can you imagine being part of a, a nation looking for hope, for salvation, for something new? A, a nation that is looking to be put right where so many things are wrong and off kilter. Can you imagine being a part of a nation like that? I think we can. Now we know what happens in the days to follow this event, that follow this event in John chapter 12. They're unbelievable, and yet in some ways they're understandable. Jesus isn't a military king. Jesus doesn't come to overthrow Rome. Jesus doesn't want to reignite worship in a physical temple. Jesus doesn't fulfill their idea and their ideals of what a king should look like. And we know that it leads to his arrest, his trial, his physical beating, and ultimately, his death. Can you imagine being part of a nation that changes its views on hope in a matter of days? Maybe in a matter of moments. Imagine being part of a nation like that. Can you imagine? I think we can. Right now, we are looking for hope, aren't we? Romans chapter 5, I read just a handful of moments ago. R Romans chapter 5 promises, quote, hope does not disappoint us. Hope does not disappoint us. That's the kind of hope we want. We want to be that kind of people. But what do you do in the middle of it all? What do you do uh, when you get a glimpse of hope, but you're not quite sure how it's all going to play out? What do you do with the slice of faith that you have, but you're not totally confident in where your faith is going to lead you? What do you do when you're part of a nation held in captivity? What do you do when you're part of a, a nation that does not worship very fully and very expressively? What do you do when you're part of a nation where political parties fight one another? What do you do when Jesus rolls into town and his version of hope is different than yours? Look again at your Bibles. John chapter 12, verse 16. The text says this, and I'm quoting from the New International Version. I like how their words have it. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that these things had to be done to him. I like that line. 
At first, his disciples did not understand all this. You see, we live as people of hope. But if we're honest, if we would allow just a moment of honesty about our Christian faith, we also are living as disciples who do not understand all this. Am I right? We don't understand all this. We don't understand COVID-19 illness. We don't understand why so much is changing around us. We're not sure how we're supposed to get through each week when each week just changes, sometimes by the day, sometimes by the moment. We have deep questions. Questions, frankly, that are not being answered. I like that line. At first, his disciples did not understand all this. Only after. Only after did they realize. So I think here's, here's how some of us have been hoping. Here's how we've been doing the hope thing lately, prior to COVID-19 and prior to, to where we are today on April 5th, 2020. Uh, hope kind of plays itself or has played itself out like this. I hope my dad buys me a value meal at McDonald's. Not a sponsor, by the way. I hope my dad buys me uh, a meal at McDonald's. And here's how hope gets fulfilled in that, in that car ride. Young people, you nag your dad. You ask if he has money. You call up the app on your, your phone and, and remind him that there's some deals going on at McDonald's or whatever, whatever kind of fast food item that it is that you want. And you kind of work your way until you kind of essentially break your dad down and he stops and fulfills your hope, quote, your hope. You know, I hope dad buys me that. And you control the scenario until you get your hope. Or maybe some of you, uh, you love going to Bowman's Outdoor Sports uh, over on 53. And when you're rolling in, you're thinking, man, I hope Dave has a, has a firearm sale at, at his store today when I get there. And you roll into his store. And here's how hope gets fulfilled. Whether or not that firearm is on sale or not, you buy it. And voila, hope is fulfilled because you controlled the scenario. Uh, maybe it's, uh, I hope that movie is on Netflix when I get home. I hope I can watch that movie on Netflix. And that hope gets fulfilled by either Netflix, and if they don't have it there, you sign up for Amazon Prime, and if they don't have it, maybe I'll go on Disney Plus, maybe they'll have it, or maybe I'll roll down to Redbox and I'll see if they have it. We can control how our hope is fulfilled in so many areas of life. We're in pretty good control of our lives, or at least we have been in pretty good control of our lives. Oftentimes our hope is quickly given, or we can quickly create it and fulfill our hope. But wouldn't you say with me, we are learning that some hope comes by waiting. Some hope comes through perseverance. Some hope comes because of difficulty. The disciples, again, in John chapter 12, verse 16, at first, they did not understand. Only after. My hope, my genuine hope for you this morning and in this current crisis is that you will wait for the hope Jesus brings. There was hope this morning in the new sunrise this morning. There was hope this morning as the birds were singing. It reminded me that God is still directing the seasons. There was hope this week in the generosity and the sacrifice you made in your giving to our church. There was hope and generosity as you served yesterday in our grocery giveaway. I was reminded that God is still working through his people. There was hope this week as you texted one another, sent actual snail mail letters to one another, as you prayed with one another over the phone, or as you gathered in video conference settings and you engaged. And there's hope that the Spirit of God is still encouraging us and calling us to love one another. And there is hope ahead of us. Next Sunday, we will celebrate Easter, the Resurrection Sunday of our Lord Jesus Christ, where we believe that Jesus has broken the curse of sin and death. And there is hope ahead of us because God has promised never to leave us or forsake us. And there is hope for you and your household, even if you don't understand it now. The palm branch is a symbol of hope. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And his 
disciples at first did not understand. Only after. So may we be people who wait and hope. Father, thank you for meeting with us in this simple gathering where we're using technology. Using technology as our means of connection. And so I pray that your Holy Spirit would give us hope today. And that while we wait and while we wonder and while we look to you to fulfill our hopes and our desires, we would trust you and allow you to teach us what your hope looks like in these days. So Father God, I ask that you would be a provider to each and every family. Your word says in beautiful uh, poetic language that you own the cattle on a thousand hills. And I'm asking God that you would be a provider, God. Jesus, you taught us to pray um, for our, our daily bread. And so I'm praying that you would provide daily bread for each of my friends who are listening this morning. And Spirit, you've promised to be a comforter and a corrector and a leader in our lives. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would direct us and guide us. And I pray all these things in the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And again, everyone said, Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite Sarah to to join me on screen, and we're just going to talk for a couple closing moments about what the week ahead looks like for us. Good morning. Good morning. It's nice to see you. That was really good. And I have to say, because I was just right off camera, scrolling through comments and putting a few things on there. It's just, it's fun to see everybody joining and everybody commenting and yeah, I missed that today. We, we set up our technology a little bit different. I couldn't see that, which is probably better. I'd probably get distracted right. somewhat. So thanks for doing that. Uh, yeah, I just, I miss, I really, really miss being together, but I really love the connections that we found. It's yeah, good. it's really good. It's good. So let's just talk Sorry. for a couple of minutes. No, yeah. you don't have to apologize. Uh, talk for a couple of minutes about what, we, what we're looking at for the rest of this Easter week. So, um, yeah, as we're all doing we're trying to figure out how can this how can we still have holy week without being able to be together so we've got a couple of things in the works and they might be messy and you might we don't really don't know what we're doing so we would love to celebrate communion with you guys on thursday night did you say this somebody asked about communion today yeah michelle heil asked about it Uh, are we doing communion this morning because we normally do it first first Sunday of the month we're not today, but mm-hmm. we're going to do that Thursday. Yeah, we're going to do what's called a Monday Thursday, um, and that's not something we've traditionally done in our church, but we thought uh, we might do it a little different. So, so a little nerdy trivia. Mondi is spelled M-A-U-N-D-Y. It comes from, uh, it's a Latin word, I think, and it means mandate, because Jesus, uh, at the Last Supper, um, he said, uh, do this in remembrance of me. And so the mandate is that we receive communion we celebrate communion, and we remember Jesus. So that's Monday, Thursday means mandate Thursday, this do this component. So we're going to do that Thursday. What yes. time? At 7 o'clock. So you're going to get anything that you can find that resembles bread and juice in your house. It may look very traditional, or it may be crackers and apple juice. And um, that's okay. It's just everything is kind of fly by the seat of your pants right now so and what we hope to do and we'll push this out by facebook and by email is uh what we hope to do is do it in um zoom Mm -hmm. um where we can kind of live stream together where we can then see each other um kind of have kind of community um by video conferencing so again that that information we'll push out via facebook and our emails that we send to you so uh we'll try to help you you with that yep so that's Thursday night. Yeah. And then on Friday, we traditionally have a Good Friday service. So we're going to try to do that again. Um, I think, are we doing that Facebook Live? I'm doing that live, yeah, I on didn't Facebook. Ask. I don't know. At one o'clock, well, yeah. I do know that. <laughs> and that historically has been a community Good Friday service. Um, but with all the changes that are going on with COVID 19 and all the stuff, yeah. uh, we're just going to do that singularly. So we'll have a, a brief, simple service. Um, on Good Friday, this Friday, at 1 p.m. Yep, and then Easter Sunday, we have a few things that we're planning on doing. Yeah, kind of a a different feel for our service next Sunday. But there won't be anything here on campus. We won't. No, we're still not gathering on campus. Yeah, that's probably a good thing. We had had hoped 
to uh, maybe do a, like a drive-in worship service, um, just trying to be somewhat careful and try, try to be cognizant of, of some of the concerns in our community uh, and gathering people in spaces and just some other technical complexities that we bumped into that we weren't aware of initially. Uh, we are not hosting a, a drive-in service. It'll be online again Easter Sunday um, at 10 a.m. Yeah. Okay. I think that's it. I did want to say just before I go, if you need anything this week, um, we're in the office some. Um, Jason and I walk over and we're checking the, the voicemail at the church each week or each day, excuse me. Um, and so if you need something or if you hear of something and maybe we'll be able to help out with that, uh, please call the church. Again, that's 688-2380. Or you can email me, peter at nbwesleyan.org. And I would say, too, if, if you've joined us late in the service, we did have some great announcements and announce, announcement makers at the beginning of this service. Yeah. So once we're finished, you could scroll back on that video and uh, catch up on some of the other announcements that we shared this morning. Are we good? I think we're good. Okay. May God bless you as you yeah. wait and as you hope in him. And we hope to see you soon. We love you guys. Bye. Bye.